Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace a high pressure fuel pump on a GM 5.3 or 6.2 liter motor. This particular truck that we're working on today is a 2015 5.3 Chevy Silverado with about 175,000 miles. And what we're experiencing is we're having two diagnostic trouble codes appear uh, when we go to scan the vehicle, P0172 and P0175, which are both rich conditions on bank one and bank two. And it's kind of a common issue with these pumps. What ends up happening is the seal right here ends up failing on the bottom side of the pump, allowing fuel to go into our crankcase. And from there, we can have fuel go into our intake manifold and um, will allow the vehicle to run rich. It definitely at idle, the vehicle's not running right. And when we go to shut off the vehicle, it kind of diesels for a second and doesn't shut off right away like it normally does when the fuel pump is good. One other common symptom that I see from this issue occurring is uh, if you go to check the oil, the oil will appear to be over full, maybe by a half quart or a quart. That's actually from excess fuel going into the crankcase and increase the volume of oil. So if you are doing this repair, make sure to drain your oil and change out your oil filter. You definitely don't want any gasoline mixed in with the motor. One other good diagnostic aid I use is long-term fuel trims. Long-term fuel trims is a percentage of fuel compensation that the computer is making while the engine is running. And what we'll see is when this issue is occurring with the fuel pump, our long-term fuel trims will be negative about 20 to 35%, um, just meaning that the computer is pulling back fuel, trying to compensate for the overly rich condition that the engine is having. Now, overall, the job's not too difficult. However, there are a couple tips and tricks I wanna show you along the way. So with all that said, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna need to get the job done. All right, so we'll need a 516 socket, a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna need a 3 8 quick disconnect fuel line tool, a 17 millimeter open end wrench. We're also going to need a metal trim removal tool. Don't try to use a plastic. We're gonna need as much strength as we can for the wiring harness on the back of the motor. Uh, so a metal one works great. We'll also need a 3 8 ratchet with a three inch extension. We're gonna need a inch pound wrench and a um, foot pound wrench as well. And of course, we're gonna need a brand new fuel pump. I recommend going OEM with AC Delco. If you do, you get two new bolts, a new gasket, and a new bracket. We're also gonna need eight intake manifold gaskets. Um, this is just an installation guide, um, making sure that the camshaft is at the base fuel lobe. Um, it makes the job go so much quicker. If you don't have one of these, there's other ways to find to make sure that the engine is in the correct position. I'll go over that in a little bit. And then also we're gonna need a brand new intermediate, intermediate fuel pipe. Uh, this fuel pipe has crush style uh, connections and once the connections are installed or crushed, they do not reseal very well. Um, I do recommend you replace this intermediate pipe along with the fuel pump itself. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description. So if you wanna purchase the parts online, and save some money, you could do so. All right, so before we begin tearing everything apart, it's important to know we're gonna, we are, of course, going to be opening up the high-pressure fuel system, which is capable of holding hundreds of PSI overnight or even for a couple days. So it's important to bleed all that fuel pressure out before we crack any fittings. It's just safe to do that. And there's really two ways to do that. You could take a bi-directional scanner, turn off the fuel pump, and crank the engine until the engine dies. That will ensure that, uh, you know, we have no more fuel pressure. Or we can remove the fuel pump fuse, which is the easiest thing to do. Not everybody has a scanner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna remove the fuse, start the motor, and then we're gonna take the battery, uh, negative battery terminal cable off. That way, um, you know, nothing happens when we're working on the motor. Um, no one starts a vehicle or anything like that. All right, now that that's complete, we can go ahead and start removing everything to get to the fuel pump itself, which is located under the intake manifold. As you can see, this vehicle has an aftermarket intake. Um, if yours has the stock intake, it's gonna be pretty much the same procedure. It's just gonna look different. We're gonna start by removing the PCV lines and then our intake tube and the connection for our mass airflow sensor.
All right, now we're ready to go ahead and remove the wiring harnesses from the intake manifold itself. Um, there's two wiring harnesses that we need to separate, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And the one on the driver's side actually loops around and connects to the cover here. What a lot of people try to do is they try to remove the cover or separate the cover from the intake manifold. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna remove the cover and the intake manifold as one piece, but it's important to go ahead and remove the four grommets on the back side of the cover. And to do that, we're gonna take our little handy trim removal tool and kind of pop those rivets off. It's gonna be hard to get that view on camera. I'll do my best, but we're just gonna start with the connections that we can see here, like the throttle body connection and all of the grommets that go into the cover itself. All right, so our wiring harness is free from the cover of our intake manifold. I went ahead and got all four plastic rivets off of the back. You're gonna fight it for a while, but eventually you'll get it. If you don't get all the rivets, that's no problem. You can remove the intake bolts and slide the manifold forward, giving you a little bit more room. Um, but I got mine off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just take uh, some air and clean off the bolts um, and the mating surface between the manifold and the cylinder head. And I'm gonna clean all the debris. That way when we remove the, the intake, nothing falls into our, um, our cylinders. All right, now let's go ahead and take our 10 millimeter socket and remove all 10 bolts holding on our intake manifold. All right, so with our intake manifold off, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cover all the ports with some rags. I'm just gonna throw a little rag inside each port. Um, before we remove this cover, as you can see, there's a lot of dirt. We don't want any dirt or debris getting in, inside of our cylinders. Now with our cover off, let's go ahead and blow off all the debris on top of the valley here of the motor. Make sure that you have every intake port sealed really nicely. So the first thing we're going to do is just disconnect our low side line right here. There is a flex in the line. However, we need to remove the 10 millimeter fastener and all the little metal clips to the quick disconnects on the line itself. So with that fastener out of the way, it's time to go ahead and disconnect the fuel line with our quick disconnect tool. I'm just gonna use a little WD-40 uh, to help the tool get inserted into the line. All right, so now with all of our electrical out of the way and our low pressure side hose uh, disconnected, let's remove the intermediate pipe. This is the pipe that we need to replace along with the pump using a 17 millimeter open end wrench. All right, so now it's finally time to go ahead and remove the high pressure fuel pump from the back of the motor. We're gonna be using a 13 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts here. All 
All right, so with the fuel pump out of the vehicle, we need to turn the motor over to make sure that the camshaft is in the correct position. I'm gonna be using my installation tool here. What you need to do is you need to take this tool and insert it into the hole of the fuel pump. And this ridge right here needs to be flush with that aluminum edge. Um, if it sticks up at all, you are not fully seated and the camshaft is not in the correct position. If you don't have this tool, it's no biggie. What you need to do is you need to make sure that cylinder number one is at top dead center. In order to do that, you remove the spark plug and you can look to see if the piston is all the way up in its furthest, furthest travel. Um, if it is, then you are ready to install your fuel pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this in the hole and I'm going to turn the motor over until it falls and um, this edge is fully seated against the aluminum block. Our installation tool has been fully seated as I turn the motor, it dropped down. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead, remove it and install our new fuel pump. Okay, so our fuel pump bolts are just a little bit tight, not too much. We're gonna go ahead and torque them down to 18 foot-pounds. Now that our pump has been torqued down, let's go ahead, take our electrical connector and put it back on. Now we can take our brand new intermediate pipe and throw it on as well. Now when it comes to tightening down the fittings for the intermediate pipe, GM wants the, us to torque these down to 22 foot pounds. I don't have a way to measure torque on a fitting like this, so I'm just gonna get them pretty good and snug, and I'm gonna estimate what I think is 22 foot pounds. We're gonna start by just connecting the quick connect. We're gonna reinstall our little clips. All right, so everything on the fuel side, uh, fuel related is done. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the insulator on and then we're gonna go to the bench and install new gaskets on our intake manifold. All right, so we got all of our intake manifold gaskets installed, but before we install this manifold, I wanna kinda of give you a better look of the backside of this cover here. As you can see, we have the cover on the manifold, and here are the four plastic rivet locations that we're gonna to need to break uh, with our plastic removal tool. This one by far is the easiest, with these two being the hardest. The first time you do it, you're gonna fight it for a while, but that um, wiring harness will eventually come loose with enough, uh, you know, fidgeting of your plastic removal tool. So let's go ahead and get this thing thrown back on. We could fire up our vehicle. All right, so our manifold's in place. I'm just gonna get the bolts somewhat hand tight. Then we're gonna go around and we're gonna torque these to specification. All right, so we have all of the bolts hand tight. Now it's time to take our inch pound wrench and we're gonna be tightening all these bolts down to 88 inch pounds. We're gonna be kind of going in a zigzag motion. There is a specific way and a specific number that you have to do these in order. Um, we're gonna be starting on the driver's side. I'll go ahead and post that diagram of which bolt to tighten when um, in a link in the description so you could check it out for yourself.
So now that our intake bolts are all torqued down properly, it's time to go ahead and reinstall the wiring harness. I'm gonna go ahead and get up behind the cover of the intake manifold, slap those plastic uh, little rivets back in, and then we're gonna reconnect all of our ignition coils and alternator and everything like that. All right, so now that everything's put back together, it's time to go ahead and fire up the vehicle. If you remove your fuse for your fuel pump, go ahead and throw that back in. If it's hard to start or it kind of struggles for a second, um, that's completely normal. There's a little bit of air in the lines and it'll take a second for the lines to get primed. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. I'm gonna monitor for fuel leaks and then I'm gonna take it on a test drive and I'm gonna see if my long-term fuel trims are any closer to zero, which they should be. Um, I went ahead and also changed the oil. I drained the oil and replaced the filter off camera. That's definitely a must if you have the same symptoms that I've had here. All right, so I just got done with the test drive. Long-term field trims are looking real good and we're no longer experiencing any of the symptoms that we had before. So I hope this video has helped you out. Make sure to check out the link in the description for the parts and tools I use in this video. Thanks again as always, guys. See you next time.